Uh, I picked the wrong footwear to wear. I thought it was going to be casual Friday. Apparently it's not. It's Sunday, and it consists of walking through fields of liquid shit. Uh, so uh, this was probably all a beautiful uh, vertipool habitat 300 years ago. Now, of course, it's just covered in invasives, erodium, and uh, huge amounts of cow shit. I really hope uh, Arctostaphylos gabalonensis is up there because my feet are basically covered in raw feces. And... Uh, Hopefully it's so why am I walking through fields of liquid shit because this was the most direct route You could see this power line. We're kind of following a power line easement And the reason I'm doing that is because the power companies will often come by and clear land around it when in doing so they'll create a uh, space and uh, Disturbance for new things to germinate so you often see uh, a lot of rare plants actually coming up along power line easements at least in California That looks fucking hideous. I bet that's just pure coli right there Anyway, the surrounding habitat is all this kind of, it's an adenostoma, which isn't a rose family. It's just kind of just, just fucking, you know, mono crop. I don't want to say crop because it's not agricultural. It's obviously wildland still, but the adenostoma just takes over. Uh, the substrate is granite. It's granitic. And of course, uh, granite's very odd to see in coastal California. It wasn't, it didn't uh, erupt here. It wasn't uplift. Well, granite doesn't erupt. It cools slowly underground. The granite didn't. Uh, wasn't uplifted here it was actually uplifted 200 miles to the south and then brought up here with the Pacific plate along the San Andreas Fault So that's why you get granite exposures in Monterey County uh, all the way on up into uh, Point Reyes up there in Moreno Look at that how idyllic is that this is Steinbeck country, you know If you ever read East of Eden or Tortilla Flat one of my personal favorites about a couple guys that own a house that don't like to work of course, which I can relate to. Look at this beautiful uh, eruption of uh, Dodecatheon. Well, now it's classified as Primula, which I think is not as cool of a name as Dodecatheon. But Shooting Star is the common name. And they're one of the first to bloom in the spring. Look at those flowers, nice. A lot of species in this genus. And I believe they occur uh, all, all across the continental United States uh, and in Mexico, where the habitat hasn't been destroyed uh, by the tumor of civilization. Now, I was gonna go ahead and say, uh, this guy is fucked. I don't know how he's gonna get out of this little pickle that he's got himself into, but, uh, and it seems like an, it's an expensive cat too, you know, kind of a drag, kind of a bummer. Oh well, what are you gonna do? So, so this is what it's like walking through a, a corn maze of this fucking chaparral. It's brutal, this is a sea and note this, you got some adenostoma in the rose family. And some salvia mellifera, which smells delightful, uh, but is not fun to walk through. Uh, this is essentially, like I said, it's it's a corn, it's a goddamn corn maze, and it can be very dangerous uh, in terms of getting lost because you really can't see where you are. And uh, I've been uh, I've been actually lost in this uh, while the sun set on my ass, and uh, you know, it took me three four hours to get down off the mesa in this kind of habitat, but. Uh, I think there's something pretty exciting up there. We're gonna go see what it is. So anyway, here we are. Came out of the corn maze, okay? Looking over the beautiful uh, Steinbeckian Monterey Valley. And right there, okay, is uh, a very rare manzanita, which was just described, I believe 20 or 30 years ago, called Arctostaphylos gabalonensis. So there there you go. You could see the, the substrate here is completely, uh, Granitic, of course, this granite that again was transported up along the Pacific Plate, uh, along the San Andreas Fault, and here's a full on, a full on, full on, of an Arctostaphylos gabalonensis in full, full frontal uh, fruit, just bearing all, for all to see. You got your uh, sessile leaves, okay, sessile glabrous leaves with some rather large glabrous fruit. I mean, it's not even in flower, and it's already fucking gorgeous. Look at it. Look how nice that is. Look how beautiful. The glabrous leaves really get me. I love all the sessile leaf manzanitas, you know? And I don't, I don't know if that's a whole clad or what, but there's a whole uh, grouping of sessile leaved Arctostaphylos that mostly stay close to the coast. You got Andersonii, you got Palata, you got Auriculata. You got Pajaroensis, Refugioensis, holy shit. Look, there's a bunch more of them down there. See? But then it's still out of this just this fucking adenostoma, which the Spanish called 
camiso because they thought it looked like rosemary, but it doesn't. You got two species in this genus in California, Adenostoma uh, fasciculatum and Adenostoma sparsifolium, which you get down south and is more tree-sized. Uh, both are equally a pain in the ass to walk through. There you go, there's the habitat. Look how, I can't get over how goddamn blue that is. It's so nice. Blue and glaucous, an adaptation to intense sunlight. The summers here are probably brutal. Even though you're relatively close to the ocean, you get all that fog, you get the chilling effect of the maritime climate. You don't get that maritime climate up here in July though, okay? It's 110 fucking degrees. You're growing on pure mineral substrate, pure granite, high silica, somewhat acidic, actually very acidic probably. Wonder what the pH is. All the man's is, all the arctostaphylos like acidic soil. You could hear some rednecks blowing shit up down there, that's nice. Such nice habitat. Growing with Adenostoma fasciculatum. And I believe that's it. I believe it's just Adenostoma. Oh, you got some Cianothus down there. See the white? See the whites? Look, isn't it so Steinbeckian? Isn't it so Stein... <laughs> I gotta shut the fuck up, sorry. Okay, I'm gonna teach you something quick, nice about Mancinitas. About the genus Arctostaphylos, okay? Like I said, they mostly all like uh, acidic soil. They're all mycorrhizal. That is, they have symbiotic relationships with fungi in the ground. Uh, it's kind of a, a forced mutualism. Who knows who's exploiting who? Is the fungus exploiting the manzanita? Or is the manzanita exploiting the fungus? It's probably the fungus. Who knows? Anyway, regardless, they, you know, you, in terms of diagnosing what species it is, if you encounter one in the wild, it can be hard because the flowers all look the same. They look like little, little urns, little upside down bottles uh, with no neck. Okay? So what you got to go by is does it have a burl or not? This one, as you can see, does not. Now, if it has a burl, it'll just look like an enlarged stem, you know, something that it can re-sprout from. Basically, a burl is just like a, a large, in, it, the root in, enlarges. The, the, where the stem goes into the ground, it enlarges a little bit, and it's just a, a more massive root system, and uh, those can sprout back after fire, okay? The rest that don't have a burl have to use a soil seed bank, which is called a soil seed bank, which is just basically these, uh, these little berries. These fall on the ground, uh, over years they accumulate, uh, some get eaten by rodents, some get buried, and then uh, they just kind of stay in the soil waiting for a fire to come by. Fire comes by, toasts them, uh, and it's actually chemicals in the smoke that cause these to germinate, all right, which is fucking weird. There's a couple species that will do it without it, like glaca, Arctostaphylos glaca, big berry manzanita will sometimes germinate without fire, but as a general rule, most of them need fire. Now, diagnostic factors you're looking at since all flowers normally look the same is does it have a burl or not and then you got to really get up in there you look at, at the leaves you look if they got uh, uh hairs or not if they're hairy if they're tomentose if they're glabrous like this one smooth and uh, you got to get up they got to look at the stem uh, this is a little bit tomentose so it's it, they're not hairs but they're i mean they're technically hairs they're very very tiny hairs it feels like velvet but it's not hairy some of the mains and needs will have actual goddamn you know quarter inch long hairs on them little white hairs. Of course, that aids in, in reducing moisture, reducing uh, insect predation. Uh, some are very glandular, some are sticky. You know, Arctostaphylos pringlii down south has very sticky goddamn foliage, flowers, and stems. Everything is sticky, so much so you will go down there in June or July uh, when these things are doing their thing. I think, I don't know, if, I think they're done flowering by that point, but either way, go down there in June or July, down by like Cuyamaca Peak, you see Arctostaphylos pringlii, the stem is goddamn covered in bugs. That nothing, the ants can't fuck with it, nothing can fuck with it because it's so sticky, all right? This is, of course, not sticky. Another thing you look for is the fruit. How big is it? Is the fruit glabrous? Is the fruit sticky? You're basically just looking at textures and uh, the presence of hairs or not. And then another thing, of course, is whether the leaves are sessile. So does it have a stem? This has technically has a tiny stem. For the most part, it's sessile and auriculate, meaning it's kind of got that ear shape. It's got that, that recurved base. See how it's... That they has got their recurved base right there. And so a lot of the sessile ones grow near the coast. You don't get them uh, up in the mountains too much. You get like Patula up in the mountains. You get the Mawuka up in the mountains in the Sierra, Nevada. You know where it gets snowy. But these are not snow adapted. I mean, you know, maybe they've had a couple snows in their lifetime, but overall they're not snow adapted. Anyway, that's it. Caffeine's wearing off. I'm done. Hopefully you know a goddamn thing or two. Go open a fucking book, Jack. It's why you why you on YouTube watching this shit? Anyway, so there you go. There's your typical manzanita habitat. A lot of them, at least along the coast, in the maritime chaparral, occupy this kind of ecological niche. Just this fucking bare, harsh, acidic soil. 
Uh, we, this is a western exposure, southwestern exposure. Super hot in the summer. And of course, bathed in the fog and moisture uh, December through February. Ideally, you know, climate change, of course, there's a wrench in all that, but. Arctostaphilus Gabalon anxious, everybody.